Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Red. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting. What are we going to What are we going to do? What are we going to do, man? We're going to be doing what we've be- be- begun. We have begun to really enjoy. If you haven't noticed, listen to your voicemail. Answer your questions. Respond to whatever it is you want us to talk about. I bet it'll be fun. Right, home slice. Uh, it will be fun. I will say, uh, for those of you who are, are worried, I thought maybe you'd give me a nickname, but um, okay. Uh, right, home uh, slice. Yeah, homeboy. Yeah, because we're both from the same hometown. Um, You're we're a not going to the town. We're not going to stop talking. Uh, if we've got something that happened to us, if we go on a special trip. If one of us has a brush with death. We'll do anything we want on this show. We're still gonna talk about that. But in lieu of that, when we don't have that, because we've squeezed ourselves like a giant tube of toothpaste and there's nothing left, then we will use the raw material of your life to bring you illuminated, educated answers from two middle-aged men who've lived a lot of life, who've been in long-term relationships with Women who we're married to and men who we're best friends with. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we're anything, we're loyal. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Thank you for being loyal and for calling us. one eight 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 earpod one Now, do you want to hear a voicemail or do you want me to talk to you about your glasses I think first? I can cover this in 27 seconds as long as homeboy <laughs> doesn't interrupt me, which is going to be tough. 27 seconds could be a record. Can I describe them uh, there we for go. the it listeners? There we go. started right here at second one. I mean, you got to remember this and is a second podcast. Three. And second four. Yeah, if you're watching, you've already seen my glasses. If you're listening, you're like, he's got glasses. So I have... I am in the midst of an eye procedure that I will talk exhaustively and extensively about. I've got videos. I've got pictures. Um, I am treating the issue that has been causing my red eyes for a long time. And, uh, boy, it's going to gross some of you out when you see these videos. But uh, that'll be a podcast in and of itself. And what I usually do when we film is I put drops in that cause my eyes to look white. But I can't do that because I just had the thing and there's it's swollen. So now I've got what I'm calling my recovery glasses. I wore them last night to a concert. My wife was like, I don't know what I think about those glasses. And we walked right in the gates and the first woman I saw said, I like your glasses. So that's all I needed. What do they? I'm like Ronnie Millsap, what, but how not do they, blind. Well, they're, you, you. I can still see, but you can't see you can't see the inflammation in my eyes. For if you're just listening, these glasses are they're aviators Tinted. in shape. Tinted. They're green, but then the They're thirteen dollars on Amazon. The lens is a orangish rose, and I can see your eyes under there. It's right. Not, but well, my, how is it helping? Because my eyes are red and my eyelids are red, and because you're seeing through a tinted glasses, it just looks like oh. a man with eyes. Well, let me see the take them off for a second. You might be like, "Oh, it doesn't show up that much," but on camera, it's like the way that you just don't the, like how the, it looks. the camera process. So it doesn't it help it very, you. Very it just red. you don't like how it looks. You're trying to. Oh yeah, you yeah. Don't like the redness. Yeah, yeah. Because I like I don't want to look like I I get too many comments about that. You yeah, know? it's just like yeah, what are yeah. you what are you stoner, bro? Okay. You know? Like okay, what? so it's for the benefit of me, the viewer. No, it's for the benefit of you not hearing from the viewer. Who's but also, viewing. I'm experimenting with, like last night when I went to this concert, and it was right after the procedure. I drove from the other side of town, and my eyes looked like crazy. And I couldn't, and I wasn't going to be like, I'm not going to go to this concert with my wife because my eyes look crazy. I can't put the drops in. So I was like, I preemptively bought these $13 sunglasses so, like that, so that I would have something to be like, oh, maybe this will be my thing. My, if, if, I, if I don't feel good about my eyes, I wear yeah. these $13 glasses. I, I like that. Taylor Swift was recently spotted in a $100 pair of glasses that went viral. So maybe I can get because I'm a, about a 13 out of 100 in comparison to her influence, right. maybe less than that. Uh, maybe I can get people to buy these glasses. 
He's told me a little bit about this procedure and my doctor sent me video last oh, night. Oh, okay. All right, we'll, we'll oh. come back. We'll come back to that. But let's uh let's get into something more more fun. But you look great. No, thank I'll, you. I do like I like them. Oh, okay. Good. Hi, Rhett. Hi, Link. Yo. Uh, my name is Alex, and me and my girlfriend, Tara, we have a problem that we thought maybe you could help with. Um, we have a cat. His name is Polly, and he really does not like you guys. Um, we love watching you, but he gets upset when we do. Like, he just really seems to not like it. So I was wondering if, you know, you could, like, give him a message or you know, tell him you love him. Give him a little encouragement, and um, maybe he'll stop, you know, trying to, like, mess up everything in our apartment whenever we watch you guys. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Well, I don't get it. What's what's not to like if you're a cat and we're us? I mean, I've actually seen m footage, reams of it, of people showing their cat enamored with us. Mm. While they're watching the show, just up there at the screen, just like looking, patting us. Well, maybe we're not for every cat. Maybe Polly has heard the rumors. Maybe Polly knows that part of my brand uh. is not liking cats, even though it's not even real. It's just a it's just a thing we did for for entertainment quality. It's not totally fake either, though. I would not own a cat. Okay, I have thought about potentially half owning a feral cat to kill the kill the rats in my yard. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I don't know about the ethics of that situation. I had a half feral cat that was uh, that was apparently feeding on the cat. rats, and then he went away. And the rats he went away. He went away. In quotes. The rats came back with a vengeance. Oh yeah. And uh, boy, I I wasn't even there. Some of our friends were staying at our house when I was out of town, and they said they were sitting out next to the fire. And they were like, a rat just jumped off of the wall and ran into the pool. <laughs> just jumped into the pool. Whee! They're going for a swim when I'm on vacation? Rats? Yeah. So anyway, uh, I would like a cat for that. But uh, Maybe try cat statues and see if that works. Rats are too smart for that. Probably are. But I know I've seen crow statues. I've seen owl statues. They apparently keep things away. I think the owl statue keeps the crow statues away. Yeah. Right, right, is that right, what right, it is? Right. You can't you can't put both statues in your yard. Uh, I don't know what's going the on. Owls but. keep the crows. Owls keep a lot of other birds that will shit on your stuff away because owls are the king of birds. Oh, Polly, if you uh, the caller, if you would please bring Polly to the screen. Uh, Polly, come here. Hey, kitty, 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 kitty. Come here, come here, come here. Kitty, 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 get real close. Kitty, get real close. Kitty, 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 get real close, Polly. Wow. Hey, Polly. Polly, 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 you don't like us? Oh, now, come on. No, 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 in the, no, no, you don't understand. In the feline, in, this is a sign of love in the feline world. You think I'm flipping this cat off? No, I'm getting it to follow it. They love a middle finger. It's the biggest finger on the hand. Well, I mean, if it had a laser coming out of it, maybe. Oh, no, no, no. They are naturally attracted to the <laughs> largest digit. Look at that, Polly. Look at that. Look what I can do. Hey, Polly, look at what I can do. Look what I can do, Polly. Oh, you like me now? You like me now? You like me now? How, how do you like me now? <laughs> I, I gotta say, it's, yeah, it started it's, to work on yeah, me. I think I fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, dude. I think I fixed it. That was it. Yeah, I'm gonna try that on Sokka tonight. Yeah. Flip okay. her off. It's good. They, they love it. Hello, Sokka. It's the longest digit. <laughs> Take a look at the longest digit. Uh-huh. It's how it works, man. A little update on Sokka in our house. Lily, you know, it's Lily's cat. And then she, you know, we get the cat, and then she leaves and goes off to college, and then we're stuck with the cat. Mm -hmm. So I said, Lando, it's now your cat. Okay. You're in charge of all this cat. Yeah. And, but then Lily will come back home, and what she will do is she will manhandle this cat in a way that we don't do it. Like, Sokka does not like being picked up. She will pick him up all the time. Like, and just like, like love? Like forced love? Just forced love on the cat. And... Over the course of, and yeah, Jasper's in my, Jasper is friends with Sokka. Jade is not. So he kind of keeps his distance when we're lounging. But she's, she's forced him into submission over her last trip home. Lily's he he, last trip he home. gives up and relaxes and relents? A little bit more, yeah. 
and now when you pick him up, the claws don't come out. Oh. He'll still bat you and push push really hard, but he doesn't do it with claws. Oh. And so, and he's starting to accept affection. And he'll crawl up. If, if we're watching television and the dogs are in their places on their selected blankets with selected humans, then he'll creep into the room and, like, find a spot with somebody else. And Jade no longer uh, runs him off, usually. So they're starting, they're starting to work together or at least be in the same room together. Do you think when Lily is like done with school and gets a place of her no. own, she's gonna take the cat? I don't think that, I don't think Lando is gonna allow that. Oh, do you think she'll get another cat? She already has another cat. Oh, really? Like there's a cat at the place where she lit. yeah, at her apartment. Uh. She already got another one. Does Sokka know? Probably for the, sm- for the smell. I told him. Uh. I don't know. Show him a picture? But Polly, you gotta, Come on, you, you know, what's not to love? I, I really don't know why a cat would be triggered by just two guys talking. It's, it is quite strange. Well, it might be one of us. You might need to put the cat down. We don't know. You know? It might be one of those things. Right. Sorry, that was a bad joke. Yeah. I didn't mean it. Yep. I and didn't I, mean and it. I definitely didn't agree with it. No, nope. you didn't. I, I, it's, I seem to think that people who are cat lovers, I'm not a cat hater, I'm not a cat lover, they say that the quest to get the cat to like you is part of the is part of it or something. I've heard people talk mm-hmm. about this because people talk about dog lovers are just narcissists who need to be worshipped by these little beings or whatever. This is a this right. is an uncharitable view, right? But I've heard it, and then people are like cat lovers. They don't need that type of affection. And not that cats won't give it to you. And listen, I've, I have a TikTok account. I've seen the affection at cats. Hmm. Another way of saying that is I've seen cats that seem very dog-like. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. So I just get the dog because, yes, as I, I was walking outside with my dogs the other day, and I just think about the way that they, they, make, they do make me feel like I am a king coming home to my castle. Like it's it's crazy how excited they get. Oh yeah. When I show so up. Quite special. And I will and I will readily admit that I just love that. After a long, hard day of entertaining people with your best friend. Oh my gosh. It can be so hard. Uh I get home and if it was like there's somebody I have to convince to like me. <laughs> right. I don't I've done that. I've, do, I've been doing that all day for a living. <laughs> right. <laughs> I want somebody Don't. who effortlessly likes me. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I'll admit, I'm, I'm, it's probably why I'm a dog person. Yeah, I don't even think uh, Jade and Jasper think I'm funny. Right. They don't care. I, do t- I, d- I don't get the impression that they care if, if I'm entertaining to them. Now, they, there's certain things that they want. Jasper wants to walk. Yeah, okay. Jade wants a belly rub. They can be demanding. Ear Biscuits is brought to you by BetterHelp. You know, I've I got fears. I'd like to think I'm not the only one with fears, but um, I can only speak to my own. And one of the things that I've come to grips with over the years is just a fear of the bottom dropping out, you know, in my life. Like, what what's gonna happen if I get bad news or if uh, I go broke? And I think it, I've learned that it can be very, uh, it can freeze you, you know, much less destabilize you, which is why it's something that I talk about in therapy. Well, because therapy is a great tool for facing your fears and finding ways to overcome them. Sometimes the scariest thing is not facing our fears in the first place and holding ourselves back. You know, we're huge advocates for therapy and having it be accessible to as many people as possible. So if you're thinking of starting, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Overcome your fears with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash ear today and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash ear. When Jesse and I got married, uh, the first couple of years of our marriage, we lived off of the value menu, the dollar menu, at Wendy's. I can't tell you how many of those little cheeseburgers, those dollar cheeseburgers I had. We were dollar menu people. 
Well, when you're first starting your marriage or your semester or your career, every dollar does count. Mm -hmm. And with a Chime checking account, you can save more money and take control of your finances. Chime helps you make progress with no monthly fees or maintenance fees and access to over 50,000 fee-free ATMs and fee-free overdraft up to $200. Here's how it works. Set up a direct deposit in your Chime account and after a qualifying direct deposit of $200 or more, Chime will notify you to enroll in SpotMe. With an activated debit card, Chime will spot you up to $200 when you exceed your balance and your next direct deposit will be applied to your negative balance. Eligible members get complimentary boosts to temporarily increase a friend spot me limit too. So you can send your friends a boost to go even higher than that $200. And when you give a boost, your friends can boost you back to temporarily raise your limit as well. Get a head start on working towards your financial goals with Chime. Open your account in two minutes at chime.com slash ear. That's chime.com slash ear. Chime feels like progress. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bank Corp Bank NA or Stride Bank NA members FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limit supply. Boosts are available to eligible Chime members enrolled in Spot Me and are subject to monthly limits. Terms and conditions apply. Go to chime.com slash disclosures for details. Learning a new language really comes in handy when you're traveling. Also, if you're watching shows in a different language, that's fun. Or just to improve your brain. In any of those scenarios, in comes Rosetta Stone, the most trusted language learning program available on desktop or as an app that truly immerses you in the language you wanna learn. They've used trusted experts for 30 years with millions of users and 25 languages offered, some of which include Spanish, French, German, Korean, Japanese, Dutch, and Arabic. It's designed for fast language acquisition with an intuitive process so you pick up a language naturally, first with words, then phrases, then sentences. Their built-in true accent feature is an awesome addition that gives you feedback on your pronunciation so you truly learn to speak like a pro. A lifetime membership has access to all 25 language courses Rosetta Stone offers at an amazing value of 50% off. Do not put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. You can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 50% off. Visit rosettastone.com slash ear. That's 50% off unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 50% off at rosettastone.com slash ear today. Next voicemail. Hey, Red and Links. This is Jonah from Virginia. Um, I just had a question for you guys. So I've always been a night owl, um, just doing everything at night. Birds. So my exercising, uh, my quiet time, any hobbies or reading, I always push them towards the end of the day and then <clears throat> going to bed at around maybe 2 a.m. Um, but I think like with uh, with graduating next year <clears throat> and getting married next year, um, I'm just wondering if you guys have any tips on making the switch to being an early riser um, and doing all those things in the morning, <clears throat> and I'm talking early. Um, I don't know if you guys have any tips or ideas um, to make the switch easier or if this is just a discipline thing and I just need to be more disciplined. All right, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Peace. Hmm. Common problem. He's staying up till two, and now his his life's about to be turned upside down, literally. Mm -hmm. At least that's what he anticipates. It seems like he's anticipating that the night owl schedule will Gotta not tighten up. Will not be maintainable. It seems like he's it's a, got. It's a safe assumption. It seems like he's got to grow up a little bit. It's what he he seems to be thinking, and that he has specific plans. He's like he's got to get up, and I mean early is what he said. So there's some sort of obligation. Maybe a job he anticipates having. Hmm. Well, I, I see. I see this as there are two two distinct paths, right? Mm -hmm. There is the advisable path that you may receive on another more reputable podcast. It's not here. Uh, which, as a matter of fact, I was recently listening to not a podcast in itself, but a clip from a podcast. It's better that way. And a doctor was talking specifically about this this conundrum. And he gave a, 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 a regimen for slowly changing your sleep schedule if you are a night owl to become a morning person. And it was exactly what you think about. You don't need a doctor to tell you that you basically just start going to bed earlier and start getting up earlier and you just slowly shift the window over a period of about a month. Right. 
Doesn't seem like who cares, value man. Add who ca- for you, us. you don't have a month, Jonah. Here's what you you remember that show. Uh, there's other ones like it, like Scared Straight. Yeah, uh, I know the principal, right? And uh, I'm not talking about those uh, those camps where you they try to make it not gay. I'm not talking about that. Oh, I'm not talking about that. Oh, that is what I was thinking. About. Those are bad. What I'm talking about is that TV show where there's kids who are just hellions out of control. Oh, and they go to prison. They take them to prison. And somebody scares them into being on the straight and narrow, which has nothing to do with sexual orientation. But the way that those start is a crazy person that looks like Sergeant Slaughter, the wrestler, shows up at your house and takes you and throws you into a van, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think we got to do something like that that's going to work really quickly. So Jonah, what you need is, once you determine when you want to get up, okay? Let's say you want to get up at 7 a.m. So what you're going to do is you're going to set an alarm for 7 a.m. And then if you get up, we're all good. But over the course of maybe a week, what you do is you have a very Sergeant Slaughter-like character in a van outside that... If you hit the snooze, he has a little alarm on him, a, a beeper. Yeah. That goes off that then he comes inside and he just beats the hell out <laughs> of him. Right. I think he'd be easy to find. I'm pretty sure there's a whole category on Craigslist for this type of former person. Former wrestlers. Like former wrestler living in van, early riser. Or football players who try to become wrestlers and didn't make it. <clears throat> People uh, who are willing, available to willing beat and up ready people. to inflict pain. Yeah. That'll do it. And, That'll do it. And if a, if a sergeant, I mean, I don't know if, you, you know, if you're watching, when I said Sergeant Slaughter the first time, we popped up a picture of Sergeant Slaughter, just so you know what he looks like. But I don't know, like, what's the modern day Sergeant Slaughter? Hold on, we popped up a picture? Yeah, we can do that because. What the hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because when I say something like that. Okay. Then it sets well, a whole team into action well, you're, you're, to go find a picture. You're, I mean, this is on a power I, trip. I didn't ask for an effect. I just asked for right. a picture that, of SS. Too, too much. Sergeant Slaughter. Too much too soon. Uh, but what's a modern day Sergeant Slaughter? Who's the scariest character that you could get somebody to dress up like that could come beat the hell out of you? Uh, um, um, uh, it's a scary person. Um, I'm kind of afraid of. I'm afraid of doctors. <laughs> like, you know, it's like... You're well, afraid that doctors are going to do what? I'll tell you what. Give me tore, bad news. Tore my eyes up. Give me bad news. You know? So, like, you... Like so a diagnosis. In, in your version, a doctor comes in after being beeped, which is appropriate, beeper. Yeah, he's already he got a beeper. comes in and he gives you a, a di- like a terminal diagnosis. He gives me a bad diagnosis. I and and I the, lo- the more I'm late, the like worse this. my... I don't like exactly. That. I don't like that. Yeah, you're gonna, and then you have it. But you, you have that. But, but you know that it's not real. Okay, I guess. In my version, the guy does beat the hell out of you. Okay, all right. He's got on glo- soft gloves, so you can still get up and go do your job that day. But you know what I'm saying? You it don't takes a get few days at, for bruising to show you up. You don't get actual black eyes, but it's just like maybe slapping. It might be more body work. Maybe it's one of those guys from the slap fights. Oh my gosh, I hate, I can't watch that. Well, I don't necessarily like watching it, but TikTok and Instagram think that I do because they keep showing me people getting the hell slapped out of them. It just doesn't seem. (laughs) People get knocked out that way, man. Sustainable. Since when are you worried about sustainable slapping? What, what do you mean? Well, I mean, like, I'm, I'm for worried. the individual. Yeah, it's for, much more sustainable than getting punched by like like a boxer or something. Is it though? Well, I guess because if you're you get just hit with standing the meat of the there, hand, it's hard. You're standing there just taking it. Some of on them the are. head. Yeah, on the cheek. And there's no padding. Is there anything on the hand? No, nothing on the hand. Uh, chalk. Nothing on for, the face for grip. They use chalk? Yeah, yeah. You chalk up like LeBron, and then you pow. So that when it hits the face, it doesn't slide? Yeah, yeah. You want to grip that face so you can turn it. Seriously? Yeah, apparently you've never watched one all the way through. I've seen it, but like it's, it's kind of like how I fix my hair. The longer it takes, the further back from the mirror I get. Mm. I don't know why. I just notice that happens. Sometimes I'm clear across the room by the time I'm done trying to fix my hair. Weird. 
and I can't stop it either. It's just like as soon as I start rubbing my hands through my hair, I start backing up. It's like I want to know what people are going to think of me when they first see me. You know? Well, the hair has got to look good from across the room if you're ever going to get closer. And then once it passes that test, I start coming back closer to the mirror and I kind of dial it in How a little bit more. How big is your bathroom? You've been in it. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> standing in the shower by the end of it. I think the sla- I think I'm amending this to the slapper. I I, I don't think you need a. a it's a hell of a way to wake up. Because I because I got to imagine that there's a lot of people who are aspiring slappers but haven't made it on the circuit yet. Yep, this is like minor leagues. You they can make extra scratch by living in a van yeah. and waking people up. You get like a that, single A level slapper who's got who's out there in your front yard for a week. You get slapped one time at seven oh nine, right? Your your ass is getting up from then on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> at least for another week and a half. Yeah, you know. And they're probably not that expensive. The other way to go, because you implied that there was a whole other direction to go. Well. The first way, which was the legitimate route by the doctors. Oh, the, no. The well, then there's a, there's a third way, which is stick to your guns, Jonah. You're a night person. Use that to your advantage. But work third shift. I mean, you can... Get, it's not healthy long term. Is It, it isn't? Well, you get paid more. Well... You get paid time and a half if you work at night. Is that true? Depending on the job, but Security yeah. Security guard. People will get paid more for, for that reason because mm-hmm. not, not not as many people want to do it. Well, so, some people so you are have a competitive night advantage. It, there is a there is this. I don't know if you've seen it when you look at your uh, aura ring like readout. It talks. It tells you like where your sleep lined up with your natural disposition. Have you yeah. seen this? Yeah. And this is a scientific concept that the way I've heard it explained is that. The large majority of people essentially need, you know, seven, seven to nine hours of sleep every single night, and they kind of need it in a typical window of like, you know, 10 or 11 to whatever, seven or eight, whatever. But there are exceptions on each side of the the curve where people can be more like literally more morning people and literally more night people. So it, you if you can if you're a night person, you do your best work at that time. Yeah. Then maybe you just find a job and a partner where these things all work together. Because I severely question the the way that he worded it as how do I become a morning person? Well, just because you have the discipline to wake up to to do your obligations doesn't make you a morning person. A morning person, by my definition, is somebody who wakes up raring to go and they love it. They love getting up before the sun and doing the stuff that they do and having that, oh, I get this alone time and I get the sunrise. You and can, I get but the, you can make yourself into that, though. You, you can you literally. Think you can? Yeah, yeah. You literally can make yourself into that. But then that's a philosophical exercise that needs to follow. So how do you do that part of it? Because that that's a personality like just wanting to stay up all night like th- thriving in the dark you know it's a circadian rhythm type thing anti i guess but you 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 have to you got to adjust your values you got to start really emphasizing those things that you hear morning people say like top of the morning to you well no they say things like i i feel the world awakening I feel I can palpably experience the new beginning. Oh, I've heard And this. it gives me hope and excitement, and I have time to ease into it. It's like somebody who begins smiling in order to feel happy, which is also a proven concept. You smile yeah. even when you don't feel like it, and then it makes you happier. So you just start saying the things that a morning person would say, doing the things that they would do. I start thinking of stuff. And then I have I have my whole day ahead of me to then do stuff. Versus, if you're staying up late at night, you you can you might could get in a reflective mode. But what are you going to do? You're going to sit there and, and get excited about the next day right before you go to sleep? No, that's going to make it harder to go to sleep. You don't want to think about the next day. So okay. being a, a morning person, 
You got that advantage. I have, just really quick before we move on, I have a fourth way. See, we're full of advice. We're I, full of it. You could find, Jonah, you could find someone who wants the same thing that you want, who's looking for that, and you could volunteer or actually sign up maybe to get paid to be a minor league slapper for someone else who needs to get up. So then you got to be at someone else's house oh. at seven o'clock in the morning to wake <laughs> their ass up if they don't wait, if they don't get up and slap them. And then you get to, you maybe you'll make a little scratch, maybe you'll get gain a new skill, maybe you could do right and left hand slaps. And then you've got a job that requires you to get up and you're helping someone else do the thing that you're doing to help someone. And then you go to your second job, so now you have two jobs. Well, there's probably people who wanna be slapped all day. You could probably set up a slapping schedule that's around the clock. There's all kinds of reasons okay. that people need to be slapped at different times of the day. <laughs> there's somebody who needs to be slapped at 3 p.m., like a teacher who, who's just, who's just, who's just finished a, lo a long day of teaching and, and doesn't feel like Snap out of doing it. the after school stuff. And you, it's like, you're an boom, actual person. Come on, you still got to do that. You got to grade those papers, you know? <laughs> a little boost. Yeah, just a little boost. I'm talking about a, a, a healthy slap, you know? Okay. So that's another option. You're welcome. <laughs> Hi, this is Becky from Iowa. Just listened to your episode with all the voicemails, um, specifically the one about the girl that's going through a breakup. Um, I am a thousand percent with Jenna. Burning things safely, of course, is uh, super important. Um, I went through a very destructive phase when I was going through my divorce. Um, burned all kinds of shit, including all the letters, which I very strongly recommend burning for just the cringe factor is just off the charts if you don't. Um, but I'm happy to report that 20 years later, 15, many years later, uh, my ex-husband is now one of my dearest friends. Um, so just because you burn an effigy and do whatever doesn't mean you can't be friends down the line. Um, but yes, fire's, fire is your friend. <laughs> fire is your friend. Yes. <laughs> Jenny, you're validated uh, at every turn. Safe yes. yeah. fire mm -hmm. is your friend. Have you burned anything since last time we talked about this? Yes. What? Whoa. Not not a, a, as like a negative to anyone, but like I I burn things. What, you look like an incense or something? What do you <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I burn incense if like if I'm trying to like no, let something go or oh. I'll like write it down. I'll sit out on my balcony and I'll light it on I'll light the little piece of paper on fire and be like, "Great, I'm letting that go." Wow. So you're you're telling me in recent history you've written something down, uh huh, on your, and then burned it on your balcony. Yes. Okay. Uh huh. All right. And what what in a jar? What type of? Um. Yeah, I have like this a little like a youth fire group safe exercise. I, I have like a little fire safe bowl that I use for for burning things. <laughs> wow. 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 I didn't on, know when I asked questions, might... the answer was going to be yes. Did That's you... why you asked the question. <laughs> Did you adapt an existing bowl, or could we potentially sell a bowl that's meant for burning stuff from, like, I think, isn't that called an ashtray? No, no, I think we could, we could, we could My bowl it. is really cute. It's really cute. It's golden, but, it, um. Yeah. I like this idea. I just got it from, like, a, a thrift shop, and I was like, oh, this is, this is a bowl I could burn stuff in. And I think we could add some features that make it... <laughs> Catered to this particular task yeah, yeah, yeah. of like it's burning a, things. It's a therapeutic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What would you call it? It's a therapeutic burning bowl. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can you can ashtray. write instead of paper. You can write on bay leaves, and then you've got like a fun scent. And bay leaves like do this really cool like crinkly no sound when when you burn them. What kind of marker you got for a sharpie on a bay yeah. leaf? Yeah, well they're dried bay leaves. They're not. But yeah, you can use like a little marker. Like a Okay, so well, we, well, we got to make different sizes because we have to have one for burning up people's clothes too. Right, yeah, right, yeah. yeah a, you need like, a larger the hoodie larger that your ex boyfriend that. left. At your that house. is, <laughs> you can cut it yeah. up in little pieces. If yeah. it's larger things, then I plan it out and you got like, a burn go barrel. camping somewhere. Jenna got a burn barrel no. that she turns over and uses. <laughs> she sits on it as a stool. Right, right, right. Wow. Uh -huh. I like this. So and okay, so the ceremonial. It aspect is. of this is therapeutic for you. Yes. Can you give us a like a general sketch 
of the genre of thing you were burning? Uh, l- limiting beliefs. Oh, mm. limiting beliefs. Mm-hmm. Mm. Something so, I was holding on to that was toxic for me and my growth. Hmm. How about that? Well, yeah, we'll, okay. Yeah. All right. I get it. I yeah. get it. And you... <laughs> you wrote it down. Wrote it down. You burned it. Burned Let it. it go. And did you look at it while it was burning? Yeah. And did you talk to it? Or is there more to this? I didn't talk to it. Make sure it's fully out and then dispose of the ashes. I usually put okay. the ashes after they're fully out or I'll pour like water or something on them and I'll put it in my compost. Yeah, th- this is the type of thing that <laughs> there's a Japanese so word for this. <laughs> or, or hippie. Or potentially a German word for German it. Word. No, I, this is definitely, there's a Japanese word for this because I know that they Well, first this. of all, th- this whole idea of ritualizing things and ceremonializing things is- I love it. Is, it I mean, first, it's just, it's the way that we work as people. Yeah. Right? It's like, if you're just like, no, I just want to, and this may work for some people, I'm just going to make this decision. I'm just going to have this complete thought experiment within my own mind that's going to be transformative. But for most of human history, we've needed some sort of physical ceremony representation of the thing that we're trying to happen, make happen internally. So I, I, I like this. Especially if we're selling something to help people do it. <laughs> yeah, that's, you're not supposed to say that. I'm just setting up right. all the, we're, this we're, is the This is the beginning of the marketing story. Like, you're right. You're not supposed to Sorry. reveal where I'm going with this. Sorry about that. <laughs> you know, I'm trying oh. to, I'm, I'm setting, I'm creating the need for the product that we provide. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. Don't capitalize my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Just trying to help people. <laughs> what if what if breaking free from the capitalist society was a thing that I burned, guys? This is not healthy. <laughs> then that would be ironic. <laughs> uh, well, as long as the proletariat owns the means of production hey. of, of these of these uh, vessels, then we're all good. There we go. Stevie. There we go. Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> Stevie is not here, dude. <laughs> Stevie's so capitalist, though. That's what, oh. that's what she came to mind. <laughs> uh, when we're on a microphone and on a camera, we're usually talking to Stevie. So I, I, that's why I just go. I just go back to it reflexively, Jenna. <laughs> so the advice has been confirmed. Yes. And the interesting part of this is the caller was not. Um, uh, regretful in burning the that letters. That be the point, yeah. Even after fi- 15 years, 20 years later, they're friends, and presumably as friends, maybe be like, you could read back through the letters and laugh at it, but the, you know, the cringe factor would still be too high. But it seems like the implication is that the burning of the stuff, which allowed for the processing of the relationship, opened the door for a new level of engagement well, many was, years later. Well, maybe, maybe and, and, not. And you don't burn stuff so you can then become friends with somebody. No. I'm not saying that, but I think it's... But it doesn't close the door. Yeah, burning yeah, yeah. stuff... It provides closure. If you had never processed it, then that new friendship would have been really complicated, probably. Okay, I hear that. So it it gives you closure so you can move forward. And then 15, 20 years later, it might lead to some sort of amicable arrangement of friendship. Maybe it's called the closure. The closure. And it, it when, and when you burn something, it plays a song by Hozier. Ooh. <sighs> I do have different playlists depending on what I'm burning, and Hozier is on those. Like he's in all those playlists. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah. She's what got about, that vibe. Do you have any Ambrosia Am- on your list? Ambrosia. On your playlist, <laughs> put a little of them on there too. Hmm. Yeah. So we play only songs that rhyme with closier. Closure. In fact, in Hozier, Ambrosia. It's, it's, I think I think it's Hozier. Is how people actually say it. every time. Uh, isn't it Hosier and not Hosier? I don't know. Pope and Cher? Um, we could call him Andrew. That is his name as well. Yeah, but we don't know him. Yeah. All right. Burn away is what we've learned. <laughs> yep. And I think we have a... I love it when we get voicemails that say that we're right. 
Well, and you know, I like was right. I know you're I right. Was right. <laughs> Jenna was specifically right, but collect, for, as a show, you know. <laughs> well, let's see if we have any more of those. Let's see if we have any more of those, Jamie. <laughs> Hey, Rat and Link. My name is Dallin. I live in Idaho. I just listened to Rhett make the joke about how Mormons seem like they're a nationality sometimes. First of all, yes, we can take a joke. And second of all, you're absolutely right that it, there is a very distinctly Mormon look if you were born in the church. There is actually a study, I don't know who conducted it or if it's reliable, that demonstrated that Mormons could, with at least 60% accuracy, identify other Mormons, which <laughs> for a religious group is, I think, pretty impressive. So we definitely all have some sort of look about us. Not wrong. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, I feel like, well, first of all, thank you for confirming that I was right. I always love that. But also, Mormons are a nationality. I think that we could do this with Baptists and Presbyterians. Yeah. I think if you put me and you down in front of a group of American Baptists and Presbyterians. Yep, yep. We could parse them. We could separate the sheep from the, the goats, so to speak. And there's only and I don't think there's a lot of people who could And who, we all who know who do the this goats as, are in this scenario. Who who could do this as well as us. Because while we were both once non denominational before that, we we're both Baptist. And then and then I remained non-denominational, and I got and some then you, Presbyterian. You went Presbyterian, right? And uh, I mean, I could totally just take those two groups of people and just like parse well, them. Baptists, don't you think? Really need belts. I don't know what it is about a Baptist, but their britches are going to fall. They're going to slouch. You don't think Presbyterians belt. need belts? They're more likely to wear suspenders. I know that, and bow ties. Um, Presbyterians tend to be uh, a little less um, rotund than a Baptist. Oh, wow. Even though the Presbyterian is drinking more alcohol than the Baptist. Baptists are drinking alcohol too, but they're, they got to stash it somewhere. They're not letting anybody know. Yep. So they take little sips, little sips, and they might go on a little a, a bender when nobody knows. But the Presbyterian... You know, and and then what happens is you're like, oh, I got, I got, I got some time to. Nobody's watching. I'm really going to indulge, and then you, you get more of a a beer gut. It's kind of ironic, and then you got to have the belt. I thought it maybe because of the buffet, the because Baptist I, buffet. Well, because that I too, yeah. Because I feel like Baptists like to eat, but Baptists are a little bit more. Um, they can be a little bit more legalistic, right, than a Presbyterian. A Presbyterian. You know, you've got your Reformed theology, you've got your Calvinism, and there's a little bit more of a like, we can only do so much, you know what I'm saying? Like, and so uh, I, they, they'll smoke a pipe and a cigar and a, they'll drink a beer or have a good whiskey or whatever, and Baptists are like, they ain't gonna dance, they ain't gonna smoke, they ain't gonna drink, right. but they'll go to the buffet. Yeah. And you gotta make up for it somehow. Exactly. You, you, you're, you're setting all these vices aside, you gotta do something. Yep, that's exactly what I'm saying. Okay, I can see that. That's why they need a belt. I think we're talking about Southern Baptists in particular, though. That's where that's our people. That's what we know. Yeah. Uh, How many people at your church wore a bow tie? Oh, there were there was at least one. You won't see a bow tie at a Baptist. You're church. never going to see a bow tie at a Baptist, unless you go to the convention. Never been to the convention. I don't think you're going to see them. I don't think either. you're going to see. You're one definitely either. not going to see a pair of suspenders. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we figured that one out. Hi, Ryan Link. Um, I am a huge fan of you guys. I have been watching you guys for a really long time. Anytime I have free time, I just rewatch your episodes. And I recently started listening to the podcast. And now, anytime I have free time, I listen to the podcast. All right. So I was wondering, um, do you think that a relationship can come back from a lot of arguments? Like if you argue frequently, I know you guys don't do relationship talk much, but 
You guys have relationships that I admire, and I think you and both of your wives are very sweet and cute, and you have beautiful families, and I think that you guys have a good basis of how you got there. Um, so, yeah, I was just wondering if you think that it could bounce back from arguing frequently. Mm. Mm. See, I'm curious what you have to say about this, because I think when it comes to, to arguing, something that I've learned from you is that some people like to argue. Now, I'm not saying you like to argue, but I know that... Um, you know, in this the social dynamic with Jesse and like her her family, like what what I learned from that is like they enjoy arguing at least to a certain degree. I'm a, I'm an outsider. I'm just hearing this from the outside. Whereas me, I'm like oh, I don't want to, you know I, I don't I don't want an argument. Now there's a and so I think what I started to learn was there's a difference between an argument and a conflict. Because I, I use the terms interchangeably, and so that's what that's what started to open up for me, is that there might be a difference. Um, if both people in a relationship like to argue, then I, I then I think that could work. I think maybe the term you're looking for is debate. Debate. Okay. Because a debate is an exchange of ideas that is not personal. But then when it gets heated. Which easily happens. Right. Then I'm like, oh my gosh, did something just go wrong? It's like, no, they just got into it. So my experience with this. And as long as everybody's on the same page, then that can be a form of enjoyment. My experience with this is like, okay, so my, my family growing up, not much of a debating family, right? Like kind of the way it worked at our house is my dad had an idea um, and then everybody opinion, agreed with and it. And everybody just agreed with it. <laughs> that was just kind of how it worked, right? Hey, you know what? And and then you would tell me, and then I would agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we didn't we, we didn't worry about any of that in my house. And uh, my wife's family was very different in that. Yes, her dad may have had an opinion, but that didn't mean everyone was going to agree with it. And right. so there, so th but so there is a healthy level of debate about all kinds of things. And I've seen some people come into an environment like that and that's not their family. And maybe this was me at the beginning. I think I kind of understood it from the beginning, but I've seen people come into it and be like, well, these people are all mad at each other. They're like, they're, why does it get heated or whatever? And it's like, well, it's right. not, it's, it's, a, it's philosophical in nature for the most part, right? But that, I don't really think that's what we're talking about. To me, I, we're talking about relationships, and the, the way that I, I've always described it is it, I, I have seen a correlation. It, it seems to move like this, that the there's usually a low-frequency, high-amplitude or high-frequency, low-amplitude. They seem to be inversely correlated. Let me explain that. So some couples argue not very frequently, but when they do, it's very intense. Big blowout. And some couples argue all the time, and it's not that serious. Me and Christy, like, first few years of marriage, bottle up, bottle up, big blowout. Oh, you're locking yourself in the garage again. Huh. How's that even possible? Did you do that, or she did that? She does that. She did that to get she away. She does that. She did that to get away from me. Oh, your garage is pretty nice, though. Like You've got, like, a rug in there. Thank you. Now you know why. <laughs> it's a rich. I mean, we don't do that. We haven't done that in many years. Okay. But um, yeah, I do think that's why I kind of like I I make the garage a place where like if I have, if she has to retreat away from me, she's got a comfortable space that um, you know, got to put a couch in there, maybe something. A lot of big bl big blow ups. Okay. Not a lot of blow up mattresses. Are you talking about? Oh no, not no, in the garage. The, okay, got it. And now it's like little arguments that happen more often. Yeah, and that's that's more manageable. And you you fi we found this like uh, and I'm not sweet spot. Th I'm this isn't. Uh, there may be some couples who hardly ever fight, and when they do, it's really low amplitude. I'm, this is not like right. I'm just saying that it's a general observation. But it sounds like what you're saying is that there's been 
conflict, like high high frequency, maybe high intensity conflict, and you're like, can a relationship come back from that? This could happen, right? So it happens in the movies, but I do think well, then it, that, that's likely. Then. It do ha it do happen in real life as well. Okay, and that is you're arguing. It's getting very, very intense. You're and, talking about hanky panky. And then all of a sudden, you're just screwing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't know if that's healthy or not. So that's how you, that's your foreplay? No, no, no. It's like, <laughs> oh, no, just start looking at it like foreplay. No, no, no. I'm saying <laughs> if you're in this predicament where you don't know if the relationship can come back from all the arguing, just make it really intense one time. And then just see if that can lead to sex. And I think if, so, that, so if you're, that does. So you're arguing. How, how do you assess this? You're like arguing. You're like, God, it's like, I'm so mad at you right now. And then you're like, you take a second. Maybe you got sweatpants on and you're just like, bring, you like, point, you like pull them out so you uh, can look down and sweat look pants. down in there. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nothing happening yet. Let's keep, let's keep arguing. Bring. Nothing uh, yet. Uh, <laughs> let's keep arguing. <laughs> I don't know the logistics here. I'm just I'm just talking about a principle. Let's get in our sweatpants and argue. I will say I don't think if you're planning on screwing, I don't think starting with sweatpants is where you want to be. Well, it just unless makes you it easier look, to check. Unless to see you if look you're ready. really good in sweatpants. You know that guy who was um, I, I don't You think know I the did. guy from uh The Leftovers? <laughs> yes. What's his name? He dated uh was a guy from the leftovers. I know. He was jogging in his sweatpants and his junk was jiggling. Justin Thoreau? Justin yeah. Thoreau. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks good in sweatpants. Yeah, I don't think I do. And uh, apparently, <laughs> you know, because you can see a schlong in them. But, and so I'm just, I'm saying for him, maybe it works. I don't know if it works for everybody. I'm just, what I'm getting at is you might find that the thing that's leading to the conflict is a passion that just needs to be released in a physical form. Mm -hmm. There's just one option. Yeah. I'm not suggesting that you, that you have to try that. He didn't call it the healthy option. He just called it one option. Um, I mean, if you're fighting all the time and you get, you know, it's just like, you're going to get fed up. That could lead to a conversation. Maybe you'll agree on something, which is that you're both fed up with arguing. I think it's a good question. Well, I was to ask. I was. Why, how do you feel about? Do, do you think we argue a lot? And how do you feel about that? Does it make you horny, or does it make you annoyed? <laughs> if you ask it like that, it's not going to work, man. You can't ask it like a baby. Well, I'm not trying. I'm not. It's not foreplay. This is a conversation. Did it make you horny? <laughs> Get me in my sweatpants. Make you horny. <laughs> That's not gonna work, man. I, it wasn't supposed to work. It was you're supposed to get answers. Okay, how about this? Maybe you can agree <laughs> on breaking up. Well, how, before we tell somebody to break up, ain't nothing wrong with breaking up. I, I, I'm yeah. Okay. Sometimes forest fires are a good thing. That's true. You got to burn the underbrush. You know, uh, they've been they've been built on. Count, you know, the forest count on being burned. Can I give another data point? It all point? comes back to fire. That's yeah. right. You got to burn something out. <laughs> Here's another data point. Here's another data point that I found to be pretty interesting. Uh, I heard a researcher of sorts say that there is an incredible, like, so when you're falling in love with someone, uh, and you're in that stage where they can do no wrong. And like the way that they sip their drink is endearing and sexy. You know, you're falling in love. They can do, they, everything is sexy. Mm -hmm. And then on average, 30 months later, two and a half years after falling in love, okay. on average, you will, for whatever reason, I don't know the reason, um, those things that were endearing will become annoying. That's just what happens in most relationships, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the people who are able to move to the next stage beyond that, and it doesn't mean you necessarily have to then again find the way that they sip tea to be endearing in the way that you did when you were falling in love, but you sort of recognize it like, okay, there was a chemical 
concoction in my brain that was really driving me to fall head over heels in love with this person. And then those, then that concoction sort of changes its makeup on average two and a half years later. And now you basically have to work a little bit differently for the relationship to work, right? Yeah. And I think this theorizing here that a lot of couples get to the thir- that that 30 month mark and then they kind of just exist in this slight annoyance with each other uh, but there's a convenience to the relationship where getting out of the relationship seems like more work than staying in the relationship i think this probably characterizes a good percentage of relationships um and in that state of mild annoyance with someone that you are in close proximity with on a regular basis, you're gonna fight a lot. You're gonna uh, be annoyed at each other. You're going to argue about things at a high frequency, right? And I'm not saying I know that that's what's happening in this situation, but it could be, it could be. And so I think, I don't really have a lot of good advice for how to get past that other than, I think the only reason that I, me and Jesse were able to get past that is there was this, and I'm not saying I remember 30 months in, I was annoyed by the way she ate an apple or whatever. I'm not (laughs) saying I remember that. But you do know that there's like the complexion of the relationship changes, but we had this sort of beneath it all, this thing that was like, there was really no world in which it wasn't going to work out, like regardless of how tough it got, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That then that just ends up if you if you keep focusing on that then a lot of times those things will eventually fade away and it's not I'm sure I'm annoying to Jesse and she can be annoying to me at times but I would say that it's significantly it's less than it than it was at its peak and also the nature of our arguments is more like we went on a walk the other night and we spent. 30 minutes of our walk debating about my walking speed because I had talked about it on the podcast, right? Uh, I, I, did we talk about it? I, maybe it was when she was here. I can't remember, but we talked about the fact that she complains about me walking ahead of her in public situations. And and then I say that she's walking too slow and she's like, your legs are super long. So we had this like long conversation where I was basically talking about how she was like, I have to work harder to walk as fast as you. And then I was like, well, as a matter of fact, I just saw, because this was like during the, uh, during the Olympics, I was like, uh, I just saw the person who won the gold medal in the, in, in the walking contest. They have that? You know, in the Olympics, yeah, the walkers. Mm-hmm. You know the walkers, the track, it's a track and field event. Oh. You can't, you can't, you have to have one foot on yes, the ground yes. at all times. I was like, how tall do you think the gold medalist was? Because by your logic, they should be seven feet tall. Right? The bigger they are, the faster they walk, right? Uh, and they were like five, like six. Okay? Five, six? Yes. Because it's not about how long your legs are. If your legs are longer and they're bigger, it requires more energy to move them. It all it all balances out. Anyway, we got into this. We got into an argument like so, about this for thirty minutes, and I was like, "Did you win?" And I was like, "No, of course I didn't." But I was like, "I'm not backing down on this because the gold medalist is five six. I feel like I've got this in the bag." And then I was like, "Let's go look at the average heights of the gold medal winners in this event." And because what you find in Olympics is that every single event has a body type that ends up winning. Who wins the high jump, right? You watch the high jump, you see these tall, slim women. Every one of them. I think they're Presbyterian. All Presbyterians (laughs) jumping over that thing, right? You don't see like a five foot woman doing it. You don't see like a six, eight woman doing it. It's like Mm -hmm. someone who's like unusually tall for a woman, slim, like long legs, like, Who's winning the 100 meter dash? You know. So anyway, so I thought I made my point, but it didn't. It didn't matter. But at the end, we basically laughed about the fact that we had talked about this for half an hour on a walk. Okay. I'm sorry that you still lost, Brett. Well, I think I won. It's just I I I oh. did not succeed in convincing her, but I think I have the better argument. Okay, I think this requires a timeout. That's my advice. Oh, okay. 
a timeout, and I think this is the question of like talking about the fact that you have arguments. I think a little curiosity would go a long way. Do you think? Mm. We, do we think we argue a lot? What do you think that means? Mm. Does it annoy you that we argue a lot? Are you annoyed at me a lot, and that's why we argue? You know, lob some questions. Hmm. Lob them. Yeah, I was like, I don't care. It's just like, well, I don't know. Maybe you need to find a Baptist. But yes, you can, your relationship can come back from arguments. Of sure. course, sure it can. Of course, sure it can. Right? Look at us. Yeah. All right, get, give us give us a nice one to go out on. Hey guys, it's Jamie. So I have a situation that I could use your advice on. Um, my stepmom is applying for a job in the school district that I have taught at for the past 12 years. And while I like my stepmom in small doses, I think being in the same building with her day after day after day would put a substantial strain on our relationship. Um, she's already turned in the application and she put me down as a reference which I also think is kind of weird. So what do you think is the best way to handle this situation, both with her as well as if my bosses ask me about her? Thanks for your help. Talk to you later, hopefully. Bye. So this Jamie's a teacher? So I would assume. Not you. Not me. It sounded like you. It did sound like you. And then I was like, well, hold on. Is this is this Jamie, our producer, who's sitting right here? And her stepmom's about to start working. And stepmom, here. and we're interviewing her stepmom. <laughs> also, that... don't have a stepmom, which is nice. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Parents still together. <laughs> okay, I, I get it. All right, good for them. Yeah. And, and for you, stepmoms can be nice too. Yeah, they can they be can, nice, but uh, they also cannot be. But her uh, her mom was the previous caller who's been arguing a lot though, so we don't know how oh. long, we don't know how long it's gonna. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it doesn't sound like it sounds like stepmom needs to understand a little boundaries here. I mean, it doesn't sound like she asked stepdaughter what she thought about this job application before she submitted it. So that leaves the door open for you to do what you need to do, stepdaughter. This is your realm. And is stepmom gonna be coming in there? <sighs> She put you as a reference. That also opened the door. Mm. You have the power, like He Man. I think. Hopefully, the you know the the principal or whoever's hiring is going to ask you about this. And I think there's a way to just say, well, you know, she is my stepmom. So it kind of is a there's a I don't know what I don't know how strange that might be. You know, you just, you just, you mm. put a little doubt in there. It's like, uh, you don't know about it. She's a great person. I love her, my, or my dad loves her, or whatever is true to say. But like, just plan a little, like, you're a little concerned. And so it's, you know, the, that's the power that you have is to like, just, just say a little something. It's not like character um, assassination in it by any form. And then they're probably getting the message, you know, we should we probably shouldn't be shouldn't be hiring people who are like related by marriage to work here, you know, that well, could What's the nature things. of this school? How big is it? You know. Well, they this... said the district. So is it necessarily that specific school? Like she says she uh, her stepmom is applying at the same school district. So maybe yeah, right. it could be a different this school. Montes this isn't Montessori, right? And how desperate is she for a job? You know? Well, we don't know the per we don't know the background. You know, I mean if she's desperate for a freaking job, you don't I, don't, want, you I don't, don't know if you should sabotage it. That feels yeah, I don't know the nature of this. But that's not gonna stop us from pontificating on it. <laughs> um Yeah, you you're you you know you know, you're probably not really interested in um um you're probably going to consult other people. Let me just say that. <laughs> you should. <laughs> yeah, we're going to rely on that. <laughs> but what I would say, one of the things about Link's plan that I don't believe will work. Okay. It's just a debate. Let's hear it. Is if you say something in the reference that causes her to not get the job. Right. What's she going to do? Yeah, but she wouldn't know that. It's not like the boss is going to say, we were going to hire you, but you're... 
uh, stepdaughter when you apply for a felt j- weird about it. When you apply for a job that you're qualified for, that you have the, I, let's just say, qualified for, has the experience for, there is a need for it, and then there's a reference, and then you don't get hired, your first thought is, well, what happened with the reference? And now you've got a potentially more complicated situation because now- But it's isolated. It's, it's like, what did you say from my reference? Into them. Well, I said that it might be weird to have stepmom at the thing. But you can't say that. Oh, well, then you're gonna lie? You're gonna lie, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So I first, I'll just say I respect the- you know how it is. Like you've kind of you, you you've got your life in this arena, and then you've got your family over here, right? Keep and it then separate. sometimes, all of a sudden, the family does runs does an end around and ends up being involved in this thing over here that you didn't expect, and it can be complicated. And that doesn't make you a bad person for recognizing that. Right, you're a bad person for other reasons. I don't know the <laughs> no, nature of the relationship. Uh, but what I would say, and I I believe that the healthiest path forward is probably burning something because you were asked to be a reference. The door is open. Yes, the door is open for you to say whatever you want to on the reference. But the door is also open for you to just have a conversation with the step D- a direct conversation, and just be like. How bad do you need this? This is how I'm worried about this for the following reasons. Yeah. And again, I'm not going to give you the reasons because I don't know the reasons. Oh, no. If I there's something that happened in the past or there's a pattern that happens with this person and you in public or what. Or you just see what happens and you, you relinquish the power that you have to say something to steer them away from hiring her. And then you just, but then you got to have this boundary conversation about like, don't talk to me at work. You don't want to do that. You know, uh, you, you know, I, don't talk to me. Now, I didn't want to go here. I didn't want to go here, but I just feel like to make sure that this is a comprehensive answer, I feel like I got to. If this is a high school situation, right? Or even a middle school situation. Okay. Having someone and their stepmom in the same environment, it just invites too many jokes because all the porn is about stepmoms. Let's just be clear here. So all the kids are making porn jokes? I'm just saying that the kids are watching porn. The, <laughs> the, 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 there's a lot of step stuff happening in porn. And you're just walking right into an awkward situation. And so you could put in the reference, if you just want to be straight up honest, you could say, you know what? According to a podcast that I listened to, all the kids are watching porn. There's a lot of step stuff in porn. And I'm worried about the kids making porn jokes right. if me and my stepmom are at the same school. Because there's no blood relation. Right. But there's still like this moral... Ambiguity. Ambiguity. That's why people like it, it's man. Exciting. They like to push the limits. They like to be like, well, this isn't technically incestual. There's also the the hot for teacher thing. Yeah, this has got so many red flags. Oh my god, related to porn. I'm hot for stepmom teacher. Oh gosh, yeah. I think we've. I think I just should have started with this. Mm-hmm. Your stepmom can't work at the same school as you because there's too many porn categories related to that situation. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's a confluence of porn categories. <laughs> Centering on yeah. her, and you're doing her a favor. You can't by have, showing her this stuff. You can't have before she becomes a part. Two of it. connections to a person that are porn categories in front of high schoolers. Can't you do can't it. do it. <laughs> That's it. We cracked it. Woo, what a relief, man. Well, <laughs> what a relief. I knew, and, and I you knew know, we would get there eventually. And, and that's that's a much easier conversation, right? You than can, everything yeah, else we talked about. You can just tell your stepmom that. Yeah, or just show it to her. Just start sending it to her. Yeah, send her some links. This <laughs> this is how they would see you. So make sure you're, you know what? And if she does get the job, you could send her some links, and then if she opens them at work, she might get fired. Ha! <laughs> so really, there's no way you can lose in this situation. There you go. <laughs> Maybe she should look into living in a van and slapping people. You know, that's another, you know. Oh, I you, thought you were bringing up another porn category, the van one. <laughs> 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 it was a slap bus. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Slight slapping is also part of it. <laughs> yeah. People are sick, man. Okay, well, um, <laughs> if we haven't proven our point, uh, I'll just go ahead and say it. You need to call us. Yeah. one yeah. 888 one We had a good time. We don't have time for your wreck. Yeah, we do. Of course we do. <laughs> um, last night I went to the Faye Webster concert. My wife is a big fan. I have been a fan, but usually when she's listening and after having seen Faye in concert, I'm now, I'm on board. Oh, okay. Um, I loved her music already, but you get to see the person behind the music and she is a character. I am not familiar with. Wonderfully weird is how I would describe her. Okay. Uh, she brought out Daniel Caesar for a song. Oh. She also has a song on her latest album with Lil Yachty, who was a cl like a classmate of hers. Oh, I might have heard that one. And uh, it's called Lego Ring. And oh. it's not really representative of her body of work. If you are interested in checking out Faye Webster, which I highly recommend, just listen to the song Kingston. It's been out for years. I think it was like a 2019 album, but okay, that's like a that. If you don't like that, then you don't need to listen to it anymore. And if you do, keep on listening. But first, just a quick reminder: Good Mythical Evening is coming up. That is our live stream ticketed event. That is R rated. Mm -hmm. Takes our experience with Good Mythical Morning. Makes it sexy. This scary, one is going to be very stupid. scary. We are going Halloween themed. We're going to be in costume. We've got some horror elements. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, it's October 25th. So mark your calendars. Go to goodmythicalevening.com and buy your tickets so that you can watch it. There's also a video on demand option if you can't make it that particular night. So And a very cool t shirt this year. Very cool t shirt. I love the t shirt. So go ahead and check that out, goodmythicalevening.com. Hi, Red and Link. I've been watching you guys for so long, and I've been trying to get my sister to watch it. And she's been watching Wonderful, and she says, I love Wonderful, and it is the best. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>